Right now, it's time to talk politics with um, our politicians from both sides of the spectrum. Peter Dutton, Shadow Minister for Health and Ageing, and Ed Husick, Labour member for uh, Shifley, join us now. Good morning to you both. Great to have you with us. Morning, Paul. Good morning, Ed. Good day, Peter. Uh, oh, it was all nice and collegial to start with. Let's talk for a moment, if we can, <laughs> firstly, and I might actually come to you um, firstly on this, uh, Peter. Uh, we're spending $50,000 federal money, so my money, Kath's money, uh, the money of our viewers, on upgrading a toilets and some walls inside a mosque on Christmas Island. If your party takes power, will you put stop to that? Well, Paul, I think uh, if you dug a little bit deeper, it would be the tip of the iceberg. I think uh, the real problem is that the government obviously has such enormous demand with these thousands and thousands of extra arrivals uh, and of course uh, upgrades of facilities are going to take place because they've got record numbers of people on yep, the island. Yeah, fair enough, so but I don't, want to, I don't really want to turn this into an asylum seeker thing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a mosque on Christmas Island. Why should taxpayers in Australia be footing the bill to upgrade the toilets in it? Well, the responsibility of uh, the Australian government is to make sure that they've got uh, facilities on Christmas Island, particularly if they're policies are encouraging people to come via boats and uh, people have a, a basic right to practice a religion uh, and the government provides these facilities and as I say uh, millions of dollars more will be spent on upgrading other facilities. Yeah sure, um, obviously they need medical treatment in that Ed, but, d but surely they can prey on a rug. Why is the government forking out money for a mosque or for that matter any religious institution? Well, I haven't seen the report, and I don't know whether or not this is just part of general uh, maintenance there on uh, Christmas Island. And uh, frankly, I know you've, uh, you're uptight about it, Paul, but I'm, I don't I'm, necessarily... I'm uh, about it, Ed, and it's your fault, I've decided. You're what about it? <laughs> Arbitrarily, I've you're decided it's your fault. Uh, OK, well, fair enough. You know, I uh, normally uh, expect the uh, robust treatment on an early morning show, so it's fine. <laughs> but do you think... But, it, uh, but you know, is the that a good issue, way of look, spending the issue, taxpayers' money? Well, I mean, uh, for me, as I said, I don't know if this is part of regular maintenance or what, uh, but, you know, if uh, people want to practice faith, I don't think it's necessarily that we're out there uh, building places of faith for people, either churches or mosques. Uh, we are trying to accommodate people's faiths uh, in, the, uh, in the time that they're there. The bigger issue is, Paul, uh, trying to prevent people from taking this very unsafe trip, this two-day trip, uh, across rough waters, and that's where we've sure, got to get to, sure. where the Parliament's got to get to. Yeah, sure. I just, I, even if it is upgrading, though, and we'll, we'll move on to other things in a minute, but even if it's upgrading, taxpayers should not be forking out money to upgrade churches of any denomination. That shouldn't be up to the taxpayer to, to pay for tarting up religious outfits. I think that's a broader debate that you're asking uh, us to get involved in, in terms of uh, you know, uh, church and religion and state, uh, and you know we could uh, go on uh, with that for days, and it'd uh, be quite an interesting uh, debate to have. Yeah, it would get hot and fiery too, because I'm getting all hot and fiery exactly. over it. Um, all right, here's a quickie for you, Kevin Rudd's brother, Greg. Do we need another Rudd in Parliament? Uh, I've known uh, actually Greg for years. He's great value. Uh, I read some of his comments this morning. He always gives a lot of thought to his politics, uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how things uh, pan out. Do you reckon the, 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 the Rudd name, Peter, is that going to serve him well in Queensland? Well, I wouldn't have thought so, uh, Paul, but it sounds to me uh, pretty much like a phone-a-friend uh, arrangement. <laughs> Poor old Kevin's not got a friend amongst the Labor Party, and uh, so he's called up his brother and said, please, mate, come in uh, and be my only friend. <laughs> I don't I think know they Greg are Ruddy, friends, so though. He's That's decent... the irony. I don't think they're, they're <laughs> friends. They're brothers, but not friends. Well, for Kevin Rudd, it's got to this. Uh, and Greg, Greg's a decent sort of bloke, but I'm not sure uh, this coming election is going to be the season for independence. Uh, and, you know, would he promise to work with his brother? Uh, it seems not, from what I understand of the relationship, but he hasn't got too many friends in the Labor Party otherwise. All right, Peter, um, yeah, Tony Abbott, I mentioned this yesterday, actually, uh, over the weekend, towards the end of last week, he was talking about uh, work choices. Um, he said that he was a great friend of the Australian worker, but he made three points which I think are interesting. Uh, he said, right now we've got a flexibility problem in the workforce, we've got a militancy problem, we've got a productivity problem. Now, you will obviously agree with that. Does this mean that the coalition intend to do something pretty dramatic with regard to industrial reform? No, I think uh, what Tony's foreshadowing is that uh, what we announced before the election by way of policy in industrial relations will be measured. And I think that's what the Australian people want. Uh, I think all of us accepted that we went too far with work choices, but in the end we want to see people paid more. 
Uh, we want to see flexibility, particularly I talk to parents around my electorate, not everybody can work a nine to five day. I mean, yeah, for yeah. some parents, it suits them to work Saturdays uh, or they don't want to work Saturdays because the kids are doing sport. Uh, one of the partners in a relationship might want to work uh, night okay, work. So, so what you're so saying it, is it's that... about providing some flexibility to families. Right. And, and so the coalition will introduce policies which will allow what more negotiation between employers directly with employees? Well, I'm the Shadow Minister for Health, so I just haven't had uh, an insight into the policy development right. uh, in that area. But, uh, you know, I think what Tony's saying is that it'll be measured and it'll be in the best interests of, uh, of families uh, and okay. of the productivity, which is a big agenda All right, in this country. Ed, we do have a problem with productivity, Ed, don't we? I mean, is your, is your government able to sort that out? Well, we are trying to do two things to improve productivity. Um, you know, the things that have sort of bedeviled the economy have been lack of skilled people and uh, issues with infrastructure and what we've been trying to do particularly in terms of schools, mm. uh, trade training centres where we're trying to train up apprentices and fill those gaps, we've been trying to deal with things there and on the infrastructure front you look at what we're doing in terms of urban infrastructure I think we're spending more than any other government combined But if the union's got too much control do you reckon? So, well you know this argument about militancy I mean you look at the you know go to the stats the stats show that strikes haven't uh, increased or gone through the roof mm. um, and that you know for example the type of uh, flexibility issues that were mentioned uh, earlier by Peter I mean under indiv individual flexibility agreements those type of things can be worked out under current law the issue has to be finding a way to get everyone working together now productivity was an issue under the former government it's an issue we're trying to address we need to be able to get people working together right. rather than splitting people off in yeah, camps. But we do actually have to address it, I think, with a considerable amount of urgency. And you're right, it's not, just, it's not just today, it's not just Australia. The developed world have got to work on productivity because we're up against it globally. Um, Ed, thank you very much. And Peter, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again next week. I hope you're back with us again next week too, Peter. Thanks very much, mate. Brilliant. Okay,